can everybody hear me okay? Okay, cool. So my name is Olivia um, and I am a nurse at Chester County Health Department, which is about 30 minutes from here. Um, we service all of Chester County and I'm an, a public health nurse in the Nurse Family Partnership Program, which as it was mentioned is a national program, um, but our program services all of Chester County. I've been a nurse for about three years, so it was not long ago that I was sitting in your seats. Um, and during nursing school, I, I really enjoyed nursing school. I was excited about nursing, but I never completely um, clicked with the hospital role um, and decided to explore another path for nursing, and that's how I found myself here. So I'm very excited about public health. It's been an awesome fit for me. Um, has anyone ever heard of Nurse Family Partnership? Okay, a couple nods. Yes, great. So I had never heard of Nurse Family Partnership. I don't even think I had a class like this based on the name of your course um, when I was in nursing school. But I did have a community health um, clinical and class, and one of the assignments that we had was to go to a community organizing meeting. So I went to that, and I really liked it. And so I decided to look up if there would be anything like that in the area that I was moving to. That led me to the health department which led me to their job postings. And when I read the job description for this position, I was like, yes, that's what I wanna do. So that's my hope for all of you is that you read a job description and you feel like, yes, that's what I wanna do. Um, is there anyone who is interested in possibly pursuing community health or public health at some point? Okay, it's always like 5% of the room, which is okay because that represents nursing really well. Um, to tell you a little bit more about me, I just started my graduate studies at Immaculata, and I'm the 5% in my classes there that's working in public health. Most people are in critical care, ICU, ED, things like that. Um, so all of you will be wonderful nurses in any position that you take, but I think that public health offers a unique perspective no matter where you end up. So I'm happy to be here and um, explain a little bit more about Nurse Family Partnership. So, this is a quote that sort of embodies Nurse Family Partnership. Um, NFP, I'm gonna refer to it as NFP, that's less of a mouthful, was started about 40 years ago when a pediatrician named Dr. David Olds uh, in Colorado, Denver, Colorado area, he was working with four and five year olds and he noticed a lot of behavioral health, um, social issues with these four and five year olds. So like any good pediatrician, he's like, what's going on here? Um, and so he decided to do some studies and some research to figure out what the root of this problem was. And that's really what you know, public health and community health is, is starting at those root problems to prevent these later problems. So what was born out of that was NFP. And Dr. David Old saw this problem, he looked for a solution, and he built this supportive preventative program to have an impact on moms and babies. So NFP capitalizes on early intervention before problems become problems. Um, and, and really this quote sums up that it's the perfect time period. So NFP intervenes between 28 weeks of pregnancy until a child turns two years old. So the moms that I'm working with, I have a long-term relationship with them. I get to meet them often shortly after they found out that they were pregnant, usually somewhere between 12 to 20 weeks, and then work with them until their baby turns two years old. And so it's during this critical time period that moms find within themselves a motivation to work for something beyond themselves. Um, and so NFP works to capitalize on that motivation that mom already has. She wants to be a good mom. She wants to make changes in her life. It's a very motivating period. And so that's what that magic window is about. Why Nurse Family Partnership? Nurse Family Partnership is built on this assumption that mom is the best person to raise her child. She's the best person for the job. She's better than the teachers, better than the daycare workers, better than grandma. Um, and so my role is really to equip moms to help them become competent and confident parents. This program that was designed and researched by Dr. Olds, I mentioned the time period and how key that is. Um, and it uses a specially trained clinical expert, the nurse. There are lots of other home visiting programs that you could read about that may use social workers or education people or lay people, but NFP is unique in that it uses nurses. And as all of you know, nurses has, have a unique skill set, 
with assessment and diagnosis and doing interventions and evaluating those. Um, and so I get to do a lot of that in NFP. The hopeful outcome of Nurse Family Partnership is a self-assured, capable mom. The moms in our program are all first-time moms, and that's for a reason, because that um, mom who's never been a mom before has no expectations of what this is going to be like, and so she can easily be formed and influenced and empowered during that time period. And we also hope to produce thriving babies who are poised for a bright future. Um, and there are hundreds of thousands of dollars in societal benefits, which is a huge plus of public health nursing. The overarching goals of NFP are to improve pregnancy outcomes, to improve child health and development, and to improve economic self-sufficiency of the family, of that mom-baby unit. And Nurse Family Partnership is taking place in Chester County. Um, it's also taking place all over the country. And so at each of those sites, NFP nurses are working on even more specific goals that fall into these categories. So in Chester County, we focus a lot on preventing low birth weight babies or preterm births. And a lot of that happens through education in the home. Um, we're working on increasing smoking cessation for our moms, increasing maternal child bonding and early infant attachment, increasing the number of children and the rate of children reaching developmental milestones at an appropriate age, um, and increasing parenting confidence. And all of those smaller goals kind of fit into these big overarching NFP goals. So how do we do that? Um, the expert is the key person, the nurse. All of you nurses across the country for NFP receive specialized, unique training. And so when I was hired, I got flown to Denver, Colorado, where Dr. David Olds did his research and was trained in the entire NFP model. So we're going to get into this, but NFP was built on three randomized clinical trials. And so because it was built on these research trials and all the funding the NFP receives is because these research trials produced outcomes, we have to replicate the model in a very specific way. So a lot of the beginning of becoming an NFP nurse was learning this model and why it works the way that it does. Um, nurses also um, have specialized assessment tools that Dr. David Olds and other people working in NFP have developed uh, because it takes a unique person to work in this unique model. The NFP program is also proven, as I mentioned, with the three randomized trials. And we'll see some more results of those trials, but really what they demonstrated were healthier pregnancies, decrease in abuse and neglect, an increase in cognitive and language development, decrease in childhood injuries, and cost savings for the government and society. The program is intensive. It all takes place in the home. That's one of the unique things about NFP um, is that I get to go into people's houses every day, which not many nurses get to do. Um, I don't use a lot of acute clinical skill. I'm not passing medications or drawing blood. It's a lot of education, teaching, and meeting mom where she's at. And one of the things that I love about doing home visiting and about NFP is one of the roles is the, of the nurse is to give mom the power, to give mom the influence and the control over the situation. And that's something that you can do in the hospital as a nurse. It takes a lot more intentionality. But when I'm going into a home, I'm the vulnerable one. I'm the one who doesn't know the family dog, doesn't know grandma sitting in the corner. Um, I'm, I'm the vulnerable one. And so that really empowers mom to take control of the visit and to take control of her experience in the program, really, and get what she wants out of it. I already mentioned the visit schedule um, and how we visit from 28 weeks to two years old. Typically, I'm visiting moms every two weeks, which is pretty often. Um, at the beginning, we see them weekly just for this like getting to know you period. When the baby's born, we see them weekly again for six to eight weeks because that's a really um, vulnerable time period. And then at the end of the program, when babies are almost two years old, we visit moms monthly to kind of transition them out of NFP. The program is also timely. It takes place during the first 1,000 days of a child's life, 
and I'm going to harp on that a lot because that critical time period is what Dr. David Olds found to be the most effective, and that's why NFP takes place when it does. Um, during that first 1,000 days, if you can think back to A&P, um, all of these neural networks are being formed, and the brain's doing a lot of firing neurons and pruning and really literally being shaped into the brain that it's going to be for the rest of a person's life. And that's why NFP intervenes during those first 1,000 days. Because of this rapid proliferation and pruning, um, prenatal care has a huge impact on the child. And if mom's not receiving prenatal care, that's very detri detrimental. Um, and the early actions and attitudes that mom has toward her baby affect that brain development. So that gives you the overview of NFP um, and sort of why it is the way that it is. A couple more details on who does NFP. Um, registered nurses, like I said. Um, the unique skill set of nurses in NFP, we use a lot of motivational interviewing, which I would encourage you to look into um, for whatever area of practice you go into. But it's, it's a way of uh, talking to people that sort of promotes them talking about change and talking about what their desires and having the client guide the conversation. Uh, lots of compassion, empathy, creativity is huge in this job. You're often working in um, a setting where you don't have the resources that you need and unique teaching methods because the clients that I work with learn very differently or, and have life experiences that shape the way that they learn. So it requires a lot of creativity, which is something that I really like about the position. And I don't know why they don't include this on the slide. I didn't make this presentation. NFP nationally made this presentation. But another huge part of who is involved in this program is the client, right? So my client caseload, I have about 30 patients right now. They make up, um, they represent a lot of ethnicities and languages. A third of my caseload speaks Spanish as their primary language, and I visit them with an interpreter. Um, I have a, a client who speaks Portuguese. We have a lot of teen moms. NFP, originally, there would have been a lot of teen moms in the program. Teen pregnancy in Chester County has really decreased over the last 10 years for a variety of reasons. So we're seeing more and more moms in their early 20s, even late 20s, but a lot of teenagers. And they qualify for the program based on income. So moms who qualify for WIC, Women, Infant, and Children, the, the federal program, would also qualify for NFP, um, and a lot of other government programs, if they're qualifying for that, we can automatically bring them into NFP. It really depends on the region, though, of what the makeup of an NFP client looks like. And I'm going to pop up a map next that shows you where Nurse Family Partnership is across the country. Since the program was implemented in 1996, after those uh, research trials, over 250,000 families received NFP services. Currently, there's 32,000 uh, families enrolled. In Chester County, we have 150 families enrolled in NFP. Um, almost 2,000 nurse home visitors. And this is just a glimpse. Actually, these statistics were from the end of 2016, so hopefully it's more now. But it gives you an idea of the spread. And so the clientele of NFP in Chester County, Pennsylvania, the wealthiest county in Pennsylvania, looks a lot different than the clientele in South Dakota, right? Um, there's NFP on Native American reservations, NFP in lots of different locations. So one of the cool parts of when I started NFP and going to Colorado was I was meeting nurses from all over the country and learning about their clientele and, and their clients. We receive referrals from OBGYNs primarily, but we also get referrals from WIC if it's a first time mom, parole officers, substance abuse treatment centers, high school nurses and middle school nurses um, who are encountering people who are pregnant for the first time. So I'm gonna pause before we launch into the details of cost savings and the research and all of that, um, and give you a little bit of a picture of one of my NFP clients. Because 
NFE is an awesome program. I love it. And there's so much research and data that you could talk about. But it's really about people. It's not about statistics. And so I want to paint a picture for you of Julie. I've changed the names of the people in my story for HIPAA. But I met Julie uh, shortly after I started the NFP program. She was about 20 weeks pregnant, maybe more like 16 weeks pregnant, pretty new. Um, she was scared out of her mind. She was 19 years old. She was not planning to become pregnant. She was dating the father of her child, and so they were still involved. Um, she had a significant family history for um, domestic violence between her parents, violence in her household, and abuse as a child. She had a significant substance abuse history that started when she was 14, and she had just finished a substance abuse treatment program. She lived with her parents still in an apartment behind a restaurant that was their family business. And we met in this like teeny little room behind the restaurant. She like had to take me in through the restaurant, back through the kitchen, back into their little house. Um, and she was really happy to have me there, which is always a good sign, right? So some of her strengths were she had graduated from high school. She was super engaged in NFP. She had so many questions. Um, and that's why this, the time period that I mentioned and using mom's motivation is so important. And Julie was a perfect example of that. She had never been pregnant, and she had all kinds of questions. She wanted to change her diet, change her smoking habits, change, you know, make all these huge life changes, all because of a baby that she had never met before. Um, and that was a huge strength. She was really interested in breastfeeding. And she had some positive mentors in her life. Her parents weren't the most positive influence, but through the treatment program that she had went to, she had an adult mentor who she really admired. So she really was like a perfect candidate for NFP. Um, she was a really, really motivated mom. So during her pregnancy, we had some on and off communications. I tried to see her every two weeks. Um, but she also had a significant uh, mental health history with significant depression and anxiety and that was exaggerated a lot during pregnancy with hormones up and down and all over the place so her communication with me was pretty sporadic um, we would talk about treatment for her mental health at our visits and then often after she would share a lot about her background and share a lot about her history she wouldn't answer my calls for like a month um, and that's pretty common with our nfp clients but one thing that I saw a lot of with her was that she, she wanted to change. She just didn't always know how. After her baby was born, she jumped right back into NFP um, because she had all these questions and she didn't know how to answer them. Um, and so during the first nine months of her life with her baby, Allison, I provided a lot of breastfeeding support. Um, we talked a lot about safe relationships because at this point she was having a lot of violence between her and her boyfriend. Um, he was using substances. He was also depressed. And so that conflict played a lot into her child's life. So we talked a lot about that. Um, and we also talked a lot about her mental health. And at that point, she was a lot more open to change and a lot more open to seeking treatment because she had this baby in front of her who needed, to be, needed her to be available. So that was encouraging. Um, she was really, really motivated by Allison. I'm going to pause the story. We'll pick that up. Allison's nine months old now. Um, and we'll pick that up at the end of the presentation. So now that you have a picture of what an NFP mom looks like, we can go into a little bit more depth of the details of NFP. So a study that was done in 2016 found that every dollar invested in nurse family partnership can yield up to $6.20 in return. This is really important for a public health program to be able to prove that there's this sustainable impact and that it's an enduring impact. Um, a lot of what NFP does is work to get funding. So six months ago, I had the opportunity to start doing some grant writing for NFP, which was cool. It's not something that I ever imagined that I would do in nursing school. But I think that that's a cool part of being a nurse. You really get to kind of adapt and, and find your role um, in whatever setting you end up in. And so grant writing to support NFP uses arguments like this and a lot of the details that I've shared with you to prove that this program has an impact and that 
it's important. So, a couple more details on that first 1,000 days. What happens in early childhood can really matter for a lifetime. And so, in an effort to successfully manage our whole society's future, we really have to recognize problems and address them before they get worse, which is why NFP falls within this first 1,000 days. And I already mentioned the early childhood biology and like the way the brain is forming during that time. Um, Stress has been found to have a huge impact on brain formation at that age. And I thought I might have a whiteboard or a chalkboard, but I don't. So you're going to have to picture this with me. There was a study done. Um, I have the year here. 1995 to 1997-ish, where they looked at people, and they looked at the experiences they had during early childhood, and then they tracked them for 20 years and they watched their health outcomes, the decisions that they were making, and what they found was that adverse experiences during early childhood had significant impacts on health and wellness and all that stuff later on. And this study was, came to be known as the ACE study. If you Google ACE, A-C-E, Adverse Childhood Experience Study, you can read all the details. But this has had a huge impact um, on NFP and I think also shows why NFP is important. So think about Julie's early childhood, Julie who I described to you. There was domestic violence, she was being punished with violence, her family was living in poverty, um, she had really stressed out parents. Think about that versus your first 1,000 days or my first 1,000 days. Um, mine looked really different than that. And all of that stress and adversity and challenges that Julie was facing from poverty, hunger, abuse, neglect, weakened her brain architecture. Her brain developed differently than my brain, someone who didn't experience those things during the first 1,000 days. And so Julie lives with an increased heightened stress response. Cortisol, that stress hormone, she has a higher level of that at all times than what I have just because of the way that her brain structure developed. And so when something happens that triggers Julie, she's much more quick to go into a fight or flight response than what I am, just because of our brain structure. And the ACE study showed that and also showed the consequences of that. So I was going to draw for you a picture, but if you can imagine a pyramid, and the bottom slice is an ACE, an adverse childhood experience. A parent dies, parents get divorced, um, poverty, trauma, anything like that. That adverse childhood experience happens. And over the whole of the child's life, as we go up the pyramid, the next level is social, emotional, or cognitive impairment because of that adverse childhood experience. So for Jenny, that might have looked like trouble in school as a kindergartner, um, problems um, socially with other children in her preschool. And so that social, emotional, cognitive impairment up the pyramid can lead to adoption of health risk behavior. And so with Julie, that's why we saw, um, or could be an explanation for why we saw her using substances at age 14 and engaging in risky behaviors. Those can lead to disease, disability, and social problems, which can ultimately, at the tip of the pyramid, over the course of the life, lead to early death, all because of adverse childhood experiences. And so that's what the ACE study, that's the picture that the ACE study painted. And that's why NFP intervenes in the first 1,000 days. Because if these adverse childhood experiences can be prevented, all the rest of the pyramid stops. So one thing that I like to think about with my clients is if Julie had had a home visiting nurse, had had NFP during her first 1,000 days, what might have looked different on her adverse childhood experiences? Unfortunately, that didn't happen, but Allison has an intervention to help prevent adverse childhood experiences. She has Julie, a mom, who's trying to learn how to handle conflict differently, um, who's helping, having help you know, managing the poverty or the hunger to prevent that for Allison. So that's why NFP happens during those first 1,000 days. 
The goal really is to provide a stable and responsive nurturing relationship from mom. And ongoing studies for ACEs, adverse childhood experiences, have shown that this damage and the effects of stress can be reversed. So it's not too late, um, but intervening during the first thousand days is critical. This just shows that in another form, um, if you're a more visual person. So the different lines are showing the sensory pathway or the neural pathways that form throughout the brain. Sensory pathways, language, higher cognitive function. And at some point during early, the early months, all of those peak. And so the gray background shows you the NFP service period. And so it's, NFP is intervening when all three of those synapse formations are peaking. So we're there when it matters most to make sure that vulnerable moms get support that they need to be competent parents. And really, we're supporting brain development during that period. So let's take a little bit of a closer look at the NFP research. Um, this is a way that you can learn about evidence-based practice. You're going to see it wherever you practice. Um, but NFP really is an evidence-based program. And so just like you learn to remove Foley's at a certain time for a reason or turn patients in bed, all of this evidence guides why I do my job the way that I do it. And so the next three slides are going to go into more detail <coughs> on the outcomes of these studies. But these kind of give you the background. So these are happening before most of you were born. Um, the number of participants in each study, and you can see that they targeted three different populations to have some generalizability um, from the results. And trials and studies like this are now taking place internationally to see if NFP can be replicated in other countries. Um, so some more details on the trial outcomes, some more specifics. The first graph shows us the results of children born to mothers in the Memphis trial who had low psychological resources. And these children had better reading and math achievement at age nine than their counterparts who were not in the program. The graph on the right um, shows results is that your right? Yeah, you're right. Shows the results of the Denver trial of children born to mothers who had low psychological resources. And the children in the Denver trial who participated in the program showed better language development at age four, making them better prepared to start school than their counterparts who were not in the program. The children of mothers who participated in the Memphis trial had fewer healthcare encounters for injuries and ingest ingestions including fewer days hospitalized during their first two years of life. And that's a drastic um, difference there with the non-participants. And the mothers also had greater intervals between births of first child and second child. We focus a lot on this in our education, um, getting mom on some form of birth control after she, she's had her baby. Because this reduction of unplanned closely spaced pregnancies is extremely important in reducing risks for other negative outcomes, such as child maltreatment and injury and this enmeshment in poverty with baby after baby after baby. And last graph slide, nurse visited mothers in, Memphis, in the Memphis trial also spent fewer months on welfare and food stamps. And the AFDC, since the name has changed to TANF, um, Temporary Assistance for Needy Families or Cash Assistance. So you can see how that goal from the goal slide of economic self-sufficiency is really being met by the um, NFP outcomes. So there also is research being done now on the future of NFP and what that long-term income um, impact could be. We just saw what the past has shown, but people want to know where NFP is headed in the future. So this um, study came out in 2015 by Dr. Miller uh, that projects that by 2031, so like 10 years, I think it was like 15 years at the time this study was done, NFP will prevent an estimated 500 infant deaths, 10,000 preterm births, Yada, yada, you can read all of those. Um, but the impact is substantial. And so 
this kind of research plays a big impact on getting NFP funded. Funding. You can see the list of people, um, various organizations that fund Nurse Family Partnership and make it possible. McV, the top one, stands for Maternal Infant Early Child Home Visiting. And it was a bipartisan program that was uh, put into effect in 2010. And it's up for reauthorization this month. So my position is fully funded by McV. And so if that's not reauthorized, not that I'll lose my job, but the funding stream that funds my position will need to drastically change. And so a part of being a nurse that I kind of chuckled at when I was in nursing school was policy and politics and advocacy. And I was like, I'm going to let that up to the other people. But turns out when you get into public health, you can't let that up to the other nurses. Um, and so we had the opportunity two weeks ago to have Congressman Ryan Costello, who represents our Chester County area, come to our site. And I got to invite one of my clients and her baby. And they came to the site and they met Representative Costello. And we got to say, look at this. Like, this is what we're doing. And we got to talk to him about these statistics. Um, and he got to meet a real family and see the impact that NFP is having. And so that was a super unique nursing experience that I hope all of you have. But you can look up your representative now that you've heard about NFP during the month of September and let them know um, you know, that you support NFP and that McV funding is important. Um, there's also Medicaid reimbursement. We get to bill Medicaid for our visits, and so that's part of how the program gets funded. Um, and then also some local uh, government agencies like Children, Youth, and Families, DYF, um, Drug and Alcohol, the Department of DNA, we get funding from them. And then, like I mentioned, with the grant funding, there's a required community match. So because we receive X amount of federal dollars, we have to um, raise community funding from other foundations and organizations. So wide variety. It really is a team effort. All of these funding streams go into making NFP possible. And I really consider it a privilege to be a part of that. Before we go to questions, I want to finish Julie's story for you. So Julie's baby is now 15 months old. She has about nine months left in the Nurse Family Partnership Program. And with nursing support, since we left her off at nine months old, um, Julie took a new approach and really started focusing on healthy relationships. She started asking me a lot of questions about new ways to approach conflict, um, healthier ways to approach conflict, and we looked at the impact that that was having on Allison. Julie and her boyfriend made the decision to move out of their crowded little apartment that they had moved into, and they moved in with a family friend named Justine, and Justine provided a stable relationship for them and, and a much safer housing environment for them and for their child. They really got excited about reading with their baby, which we promote a lot, and so as a one-year-old, Allison was talking and, and starting to walk and hitting all of her normal developmental milestones. Julie decided to go into a CNA program with a lot of encouragement, um, and she completed it. She graduated, and she now has a full-time job as a CNA. Craig, her boyfriend, went into an auto mechanic program. He's loving it. And now that both of them have more meaningful work and have this purpose or this goal that they're moving toward, they've seen a much, a big, a big decrease, really, in the conflict in their relationship and a decrease in stress overall. Even though they're busier, um, the stress in the household has decreased, which is huge. And one of my favorite things about Julie and Craig is they have a lot of long-term goals for Allison. They talk about her going to preschool. They talk about reading with her now so she can be the smartest in her class. Um, they want her to be a confident, confident kindergartner and can describe what they want the first day of kindergarten to look like. And they understand the importance of secure attachment. They've been able to reflect back on their life and see what they were missing during those first 1,000 days and make changes so that Allison has that. And so I have nine months left to work with them. And the beauty of NFP is it's not my goals for them, it's their goals for them. And I think that applies to all areas of nursing. What are your patients' goals? What do they want to work on? Not what do you want for them? Uh, because I never would have imagined Julie becoming a CNA or um, Craig becoming an auto mechanic. But I've been able to support them in that, and that's 
that's been huge. It's been a very rewarding experience. So hopefully from this presentation, you've learned more about nurse family partnership um, and the power of an evidence-based program. I think no matter what type of nursing you do, you're gonna be working in, in evidence-based stuff. Um, but this entire program was developed based on that and, and I think it's a really good picture. If you need research to read for any classes, I would encourage you to look up Dr. David Old's work because it's very well designed studies. Um, hopefully you've gotten a taste of the community and public health perspective and you can consider that even if you end up working in a hospital. And you can see the impact that a nurse can have on a single life, which you're gonna see in the hospital, but also a family, also a community and also society as a whole. So thank you for your attentiveness and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Yeah, here in the front. Uh, do you have any uh, male coworkers that have the same job as you? And if so, can you speak to how they kind of deal with the extra social challenge that, that can present? That's a great question. So the question was, do I have any male coworkers who do the same position as me? Um, at Chester County Health Department, there are no male home visiting nurses, um, but there are male NFP nurses nationally. I can't really speak to their experience, um, but I do know that male nurses have been um, pretty well received in a lot of situations because a lot of these moms never had a positive male uh, figure in their life. And so the nurse can kind of hold some of that position, um, but it's certainly unique. Yeah, that's a really good question. Anyone else? Yeah? Um, I have two questions. Uh, do you have any coworkers that work in the hospital and do this part-time as well? Good question. The question was, do any of my coworkers work in the hospital? No. Um, this is a full-time position. A lot of my coworkers have labor and delivery as their, like, you know, 30 years of L&D experience, and then they came to this job. Yeah. And um, my second question, do you um, work with drug-addicted mothers? Yeah. What does that look like? With them, are you trying to uh, promote a full-term birth? Yeah, good question. So the question was, do we work with moms who are abusing substances or addicted to drugs? Um, if a mom is actively using, she can't, we won't enroll her in our program. Some NFP sites might, but at Chester County Health Department, an actively using mom of illegal substances, we won't enroll in the program. Um, we'll encourage her to go to a substance abuse treatment and start methadone treatment because a mom who's pregnant can't withdraw during pregnancy for risks to the fetus. And so um, methadone treatment is common for any of our moms who have a history of substance abuse. And so we'll support her the whole way through the pregnancy. The goal is a full-term pregnancy greater than 37 weeks. After the baby's delivered, the baby will spend time in NICU and um, a lot of our role in that is preparing mom for, okay, you're giving your child the, the best start that you can right now with methadone. Your baby's gonna spend this amount of time in the NICU um, and helping prepare her for what that's gonna look like and how she can be involved in her child's care during their NICU stay. Yeah, good question. Yep. You mentioned in this last question that you will not enroll others who are using, uh -huh. actively using illicit substances. Mm -hmm. What about legal substances mm -hmm. that Yep, we definitely have moms who are using alcohol, tobacco products um, during pregnancy, and that's where the nursing role comes in and um, supporting mom where she's at, helping elicit some change talk and see if those are things that she wants to work on. Um, it's different for every parent. If that's their goal and that's their priority to stop using those substances, absolutely that's what we're gonna work on. I recently had a mom deliver full-term twins and she smoked 10 cigarettes a day her entire pregnancy. So. It, it's their goals and what they want to work on. Yep. Yeah, that's a really good question. So a lot of it, we get asked that a lot and I actually have had nursing colleagues like be like, aren't you a social worker? Like what's going on here? So it's a lot of education that comes from this right here. Your nursing education, your nursing background, the unique perspective that nurses have and the impact that that has on mom's health, mom's wellness, and the child's 
health, wellness, development. Um, there are similar programs, like I mentioned, that would use social workers or lay people or education people. And what we see in those programs, because we work closely with some of them, is a lot more of the focus is on education on parenting, like how to be a good mom, um, education on how to get connected with the system or you know find other resources, which we certainly do that, but that's not my strength. I don't have any children, so that can't be my strength, right? Um, but it's more like the health, the wellness, health promotion, those aspects of nursing. Good question. Yeah. Yep. Is, um, is there any steps in like, offering this to people other than those who are underserved just because people who have tons of money don't have the, don't have the education? So they yeah. Do. Is there steps that that? You're absolutely right. So the question was, are there steps being taken to offer this program to people who aren't low income, because every first time mom has questions. I have friends having babies who call and ask me the same questions that my NFP clients are asking me. As far as I know, there's not any pushes for that, um, at least not in the form of a free program. There are, There is research being done on if this could be replicated for second and third time moms who kind of missed the bus with their first baby. But as far as like not on the um, income tier, I don't know. That would be awesome, though. There'd be a need for it. Yeah? So who, um, where are you technically employed? Chester County Health Department? So like, if you were looking for a job in this area, yep. you would go to their website or something? Like yes, that. absolutely. So my employer is Chester County Health Department. And Chester County Health Department has chosen to say, we will be a site that um, implements nurse family partnership. So lots of nurse family partnership programs take place at health departments. Um, Montgomery County Health Department has a nurse family partnership program. But there are also nurse family partnership programs that are implemented at private, through private agencies, not through government sites. And so the best place to look for NFP jobs, specifically if you're interested, um, is on the National Nurse Family Partnership website. But also check out your health departments. There's lots of other good public health jobs available too. No. So that gets back to here in the middle of his question. If mom, so let's take Julie for instance. She starts making money as a CNA and she's you know working her way up. She goes back to nursing school. She's a nurse now, all in two years. That would be crazy. But um, <laughs> she, she can't be disqualified. Once you're in, you're in. What if you start um, using drugs to stop? She can stay in the program. Mom can go to jail. She can stay in the program. <laughs> yep. So we could do home visits in prison. Mm -hmm. um, or if it's going to be a short prison stay, you know, we'd let her do her three months and then pick up where we left off. Um, the only thing would be if mom moves outside of Chester County, I can't continue serving her because I work for the health department. But there's so many other NFP sites like we saw on the map that I recently had a client transfer from California. She went through her pregnancy. She had a three-month-old. She moved to Chester County. She continued with the program just with a new nurse. Good question, yeah. In the back? That's a great question. I don't see this ever being mandatory because part of the randomized trials was that it's a voluntary program. And we stress that a lot to our moms. This can't be court, court mandated by, you know, as part of parole or as part of CYF or, you know, anything like that. They cannot be mandated. It's completely optional. and the program might end early because mom decides I'm done with this or I, I don't have time for this anymore. So it, if a mom drops out, it's totally her choice and she can do that during pregnancy or any time after. Anyone else? Good questions. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, go on there. Do that. Shameless plug. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Just sign it. Shoot them an email. Yeah. Can you give us a sense of what your daily schedule is like, and then how many do you see a week, or do you work? Give us a sense. Yeah, that's a good question. I should have done that at the beginning. So the question was, what's my daily schedule like, um, or what does my week look like? So I have an office at Chester County Health Department, but I'm only required to go there like two or three days a week. 
So I build my own schedule. There's no scheduling service um, based on when moms are available. And so I might start my day from home, make a couple phone calls, do a little bit of charting at my house, get in my car, drive to a visit. Home visits typically last one to two hours. Do my home visit. Um, and a full day would be five, maybe six home visits packed into a day. But other days, maybe I do like two visits and then I end up at the office, do some charting, phone calls, that sort of thing, schedule the rest of my week. Um, but it's super flexible. And as far as nursing schedules go, it's kind of the ultimate. Yeah, I never work nights or weekends or holidays because nobody wants to see me then. <laughs> yeah, yep. Is it a salary or is it like? It's a salaried position, yeah. I think that would vary depending on what NFP site you were at. Yeah. Any other? Yeah. It sounds like your responsibility is to the moms. Am I correct in that? Yeah, so th the responsibility at the beginning is to the mom, um, but the baby is really the focus of the program once baby's born, because we do have moms who have second babies during their time with us, but our focus stays on first baby. Um, so, you know, we'll assess her, you know, prenatally and check her blood pressure and all of that, but the focus really stays on the development and where the first baby's at to help her learn the first two years. So if mom and baby are ever separated for whatever reason, mm -hmm. you're still going to be working with mom? Yeah. If mom and baby were separated, um, if it was indefinite, that would be a different conversation. But if, if, if baby goes to live with dad for two weeks and then comes back to mom for two weeks or whatever, continue working with mom. Or if the mom loses baby support. Like custody of baby or something like that. Yeah, we would work with mom um, through, that, through that process. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. And I think you would ask earlier, like how many clients I serve. I, anywhere between 20 to 25 is a full caseload. I have 30 right now, so anywhere in there. Yeah, yep, usually doing like 10 to 12 visits in a good week, sometimes more. Any other questions? Yeah. Sure. I don't think so. I don't think so. I've, I don't know of any situations like that, but I'm sure they exist. Yeah, I think with it, that baby would be discharged from the program at that point. Like, or even like if mom died or something like that. Yeah, baby would be discharged. Yeah. Yep. No, please interject. Please do. are not interjected because it would then skew the data, if you want to say skew the yeah. outcome, right? To get funding, you have to have outcomes, mm -hmm. right? To have a successful program, you aren't getting funding. That's, that's an issue. But two, the, the way this program is structured is that it is totally based on evidence. And some of us are old enough to remember the first studies by Dr. Old, so, you know, way back when. And, yeah. the, and somebody asked, is this social work? But the, the um, uniqueness of those studies was that it, dem it was only nurses were used that was demonstrated that the outcomes were based on using nurses. Mm -hmm. And I think at the original time, they're actually nursing students, if yeah. I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, some of them. And so they showed a reduction in child abuse, a reduction in infant mortality. Um, so it started out with some very basic parameters, mm -hmm. and now we're following, they're following cases all the way through, okay? So, um, so this, you know, if you're thinking about evidence-based, programming, which we're going to talk about from 41.12 a lot when you get to that, and this is a perfect example of something that's totally based on research evidence, and the research continues to show that the way this program is structured, the outcomes have, I, I don't even know if there's been a negative outcome. I, I, I haven't no, seen not that. that I've seen. And jumping on to that then is because this is evidence-based and the trials were done in the United States, that's why Australia can't just say, this is such a cool program, we want that. They, they're doing their own trials now and they're consulting with Dr. Olds and he's helping set up the trials and all of that, but Australia is going through the process that 
we did, you know, 20 years ago to implement the program and see what that would look like and see if those um, outcomes can be replicated. Yeah. Yeah? Oh yeah. So I just want yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Cool. Anyone else? Thank you.